Hi, welcome back to Lipper's Fun Flows Insight Report. My name is Tom Rosine. Thanks for joining me today. I'm going to be talking about flows for the week ended April 3rd, 2013. This has been a fantastic week to actually talk about the ups and downs that have been occurring in the market. We've actually reached new highs in both the Dow uh, and the S&P 500. We actually had concern about ADP numbers coming in lower than expected. We saw ISM numbers come in lower than expected. And, you know, most of all, we've actually had some concerns on an international basis with uh, Korea, North Korea, actually uh, doing some radar, uh, saber rat rattling. So it's been really quite a concern. But all in all, we saw great flows uh, considering what went on. $5.9 billion in net new money came into the open-end coffers. Now, when I say that, I'm going to talk a little bit about ETFs later on, but really the majority of this report is going to be about the uh, conventional fund business and, uh, you know, XETF numbers coming out. You know, we saw that the S&P 500 was able to tag on 10.3% to its year-end numbers for uh, uh, first quarter 2013. And then we saw that the Dow actually added 1.25% to its uh, numbers. Uh, you're in numbers as well. So this has really been a fantastic time, but this is where some of the concern has been and a lot of people have been kind of sitting on their hands. That's why I only saw about $5.9 billion in net new money come into the coffers was because people are concerned that the market is a little bit overheated and they're looking for what that relief valve is going to be. Well, let's take a look at our macro groups to see how flows actually panned out. Equity funds took in about $3 billion in net new money. Again, despite uh, you know some of the concerns that we saw, we saw taxable bond funds take in $2 billion. Muni bond funds, again, on the prior list for the third consecutive week and actually about really the fifth consecutive week. We'll talk a little bit more about that later on. To, uh, saw about $300 million leave their coffers and money market funds I actually took in for the second consecutive week money about $1.2 billion in that new money into their coffers. And again, as we're taking a look at this, equity funds was a little bit of a concern. People were kind of sitting on their hands saying, listen, we want to wait. We saw ADP numbers come in poor. We want to wait till the non-farm payrolls come in. They came in this morning, you know, right in the 80,000 range, 89,000 range, certainly we would rather see 253. There are concerns out there. So people are going to sit back and wait. But let me tell you how this happened. We took a look at it and really for the second consecutive week, we saw negative performance in this group. But for 13 consecutive week in equity funds, we actually saw net inflows. So about $3 billion in net new money come into it, despite, again, having a 1% decline for Wednesday to Wednesday uh, return. So that was, you know, kind of an amazing number to see. Well, year to date, this group has taken in about 78 $8.9 billion in net new money. So that's a really big number. We're just shy, and, and as we get our quarterly numbers reported in, we're just shy of hitting $80 billion, which would be a record since 1990. So we're going to keep our eyes on that. Domestic equity funds took in about $1.2 billion. This is the seventh consecutive week that they've actually seen net new money coming into the coffers. Non-domestic equity funds took in about $1.8 billion. Now, when we break this down into the different subgroups, we actually saw a couple of weeks ago that you know people were you know, involved with large caps, and then two weeks ago we actually saw that uh, small caps started to come in favor. Well, this one was really kind of a, a confused and dazed period for investors. We saw $235 million in net new money come into uh, the uh, uh, small cap group, and we saw about $316 million go into the large cap group. So people really couldn't make up their mind. However, as has been the case for many, many weeks and many, many months now, on the non-domestic side, we saw emerging market funds actually take in 810 or the lion's share of the net new money in that group. And that's the 20th consecutive week we've seen flows into emerging market funds. So this has been a strong piece that people have been investing in for quite some time. Well, now let's take a look at the flip side of this coin, and that is the ETF section. ETFs did not fare as well. We saw ETFs lose about $800 million from their coffers. You know, when we take a look at it, though, and it's not surprising considering we say uh, the uh, S&P uh, 500 actually gain its, you know, you know beat its highest uh, point uh, that it's ever been, so it's at high, an all-new time highs. It took in about $636 million. That'd be SPY. And iShares Core, the uh, core S&P 500 also took in money, about $304 million. That's not a lot to write about. Where we saw some of the big outflows, again, though, was from kind of the, I'm going to call it the new pariah, Gold. A lot of people are looking for that as a safe haven play. We're not seeing a lot of inflationary fears. People are not really all that afraid of where the market's going. Uh, so gold actually saw $762 million of money flow out of their coffers. And in addition, as I was saying, people are taking a little risk off their portfolio. The iShares Russell 2000 actually saw outflows about $624 million come off of their uh, uh, coffers as well. So it's something that we've been seeing for quite some time. Again, equity ETFs uh, have been kind of being pushed around by wild swings swings and gyrations, and a lot of this we saw in the last part of the week, even though uh, we had a shortened trading week with uh, Good Friday coming around. Well, let's take a look, though, at one of the areas that's been of interest as of late, and of course, that is the fixed income universe. For the 22nd consecutive week, investors still 
insisted on padding the coffers of fixed income funds. They saw about $2 billion of money enter their coffers. It's the sixth consecutive week that we've actually seen plus side performance. It was only 0.04%, but we're not seeing negatives on that side. So if you look at the right hand side of this graph, you're going to see that we've actually had some pretty good performance numbers. But again, now we're still talking about you know outflows uh, uh, you know from ETFs. We'll talk about though that in just a second. On the uh, corporate investment grade side, we saw about $1.2 $2 billion in net new money coming into their coffers. It's the 42nd consecutive week. So investors are kind of taking the middle of the road. They're not taking just pure treasury plays. They're not taking high yield plays. They're kind of taking the middle of the road, taking on a little bit of risk, but not too much risk and padding that. What we saw though is people are preparing for that, basically that yield curve to maybe take a jump. And if it does take a jump, people want to be in adjustable rate funds. And what they've done is gone to loan participation funds. So of that money that was going into the corporate investment grade debt funds, 800 million of that was actually going into loan participation funds. And so that was an amazing feat. Well, if we now take a flip side, as I was referring to it, the ETF side, basically we saw a new trend. We were seeing outflows out of ETF uh, uh, bond funds for quite some time, but this time we actually saw a difference. And again, remember I told you there was concern at the end of the month uh, with uh, basically the saber rattling and some of the other issues that were going on, and <coughs> particularly the market being overextended. So we saw about $500 million of net new money <coughs> come into the coffers of that group. It's the third consecutive week that we actually seen inflows into this group. Uh, and then with the iShares, Barclay, one of three, Treasury being on top at $201 million of uh, net new money. And then we saw the iShares 7 to 10 Treasury bond fund taking 121. So people were concerned, so $121 million. But at the bottom, if we take a look at the bottom of this list, we see tips, we see uh, funds that are shorting treasuries, <coughs> and we also see lower quality issues actually <coughs> losing money. So this is one of the areas that we've been taking a look at. And some of that is good institutional uh, 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 tell, if you will, of what institutional investors are basically thinking and what they're doing at this time. Well, that brings us to our next big group that we take a look at, and that's muni bond funds. And muni bond funds for the third consecutive week were basically on uh, a plus side performance, 0.27% this week uh, as far as returns go. And it's the fifth consecutive week, ironically, that we saw outflows. Well, why is that? Well, again, just recently, the SEC filed uh, a, a statement saying that they came to an agreement with the state of Illinois that basically accused them of wrongdoing for not uh, identifying and letting investors know what their unfunded portion of their pension liabilities were. This was a concern to investors, you know, when they started realizing they were not being told the whole picture and how many other state or municipalities are doing that. It's a big concern for them. So they have been looking at this for quite some time. In addition, there's two other issues. First of all, we do think that the long end of the curve might start getting uh, some interest rate bump. And if that's true, that'll be an impact on them. And the last piece that, uh, you know, that they're talking about is basically uh, when, I, again, we're, we're referring to like the unfunded liabilities, whether well, the other side of this picture is what happens if they take away their tax exempt so in budget talks that are becoming that are going to be coming up in May, that's a concern as well. So there's really been kind of a dour time. Explains the five consecutive weeks that we've seen for outflows. This uh, this week we saw about 281 million dollars in outflows, and municipal uh, national municipal uh, debt funds actually saw 189 million of those outflows out of their coffers. So it's really been quite a story. Well, let's move to money market funds. Money market funds basically saw inflows for the first, uh, second week in a row. Uh, it's uh, $1.2 billion, and the inflows were a little bit of mix. Taxable money market funds, 852, not a lot to write home about, but here's where we see a little different mentality. Institutional investors put $1.6 uh, uh, billion back into the coffers, while the retail investor, retail money markets, saw about $743 million in outflow. Tax exempt money market funds saw about $300 Fifty-six million dollars in outflow. So, again, not a big story there, but certainly uh, we're seeing some people, you know, park some money on the side, uh, especially on institutional investors, just to see what's going to happen going forward. So, one of the things that we're going to be keeping an eye on, and obviously, we saw the uh, the non-farm payroll come out this morning. Again, a little bit on the disappointing side, but I think what most people are going to keep an eye on, we've all been looking at economic data for the last three or four weeks, so we're probably sick of it. Now what we want to do is we want to go back to the corporations and see what they're talking about for their, their, their earnings reports for this quarter, and particularly of importance is going to be their, their forward-looking guidance. And I think that's going to tell us a lot about how uh, the next quarter is going to shape up, certainly April and May, uh, how they're going to look at it. And are we setting ourselves up for sell in May and go away? We don't know. Anyways, if you want to do a deeper dive into the section 
collections that you like to take a look at for classifications and flows, go to our LipperUSFundFlows.com. There you can go ahead and do a little deeper dive on your own. If not, join us next week where one of our analysts will talk about the flows trends for the next upcoming week and give you a little bit of their insight on what happened. Well, until next time, my name is Tom Rosine, wishing you the best in your wealth planning and creation.